this is called a grove planting and it's Japanese maples. And by the time this will become more and more natural, the trees will affect each other and how they grow because of the light they get in their placement. Here's a small redwood clump style. It looks like several trees, but they all come from one spot. A work in progress. Uh, this one I just worked on last Monday at the Bonsai Club up at Merritt. It's an Eliagnus. I found Merritt after uh, my previous career was ramping down. I worked in film audio, started looking at the Peralta catalog and kept coming back to the horticulture classes. And I also signed up for a career guidance class, um, which was really helpful and just confirmed what I was feeling about uh, working with plants because I scored really high on things that had to do with nature and with art. Um, so, um, and I ended up being an aesthetic pruner, so I, it's kind of a really perfect blend of that. I do a lot of design, artistic kind of things in my work. I'm doing it with plants, I'm outside. It, it's a really good fit for me and I, I've loved it. Aesthetic pruning is really reading and interpreting the garden and using that understanding to prune specific trees or shrubs or vines to work best within the context of the garden. A lot of times we're dealing with size issues because if we have limited space in a residential or urban environment, we need to keep things in scale with uh, the garden, the driveway, the path, whatever it is, um, and do it in a way that looks natural and unforced. So at Merritt, they established a series of Saturday morning classes on aesthetic pruning. And I believe there's somewhere between 12 and 15 classes. One day in one of the Saturday morning classes, which Michael Allager was teaching at that point, um, who's another person I owe a great debt to in terms of learning, um, made a comment that if you really wanted to see into the heart of a tree, that the bonsai people were the ones who could do that. And that really struck me and stayed with me, and I really wanted to understand trees more. So I started doing bonsai, and I had also gotten a lot of input from people that doing bonsai was really good practice for aesthetic pruning. So I realized there were different styles of bonsai, and that up at Merritt, they were into a very natural style, and that appealed to me. They weren't interested in overworking the trees. It was more about bringing out a more natural look so a lot of the trees I have are, are still unfinished. They're in big pots, they're still in training, but the important thing isn't how they look, it's the relationship I get to have with the tree. So this is my basic tool set. These are cutting tools, pruning tools, also the scissors. And these are tweezers or plucking pine needles off without getting my fingers in and smashing little pine buds. Um, this tool I probably use the most. It's a concave cutter or called a branch cutter. And it's for taking off uh, branches, as it says, and a um, little dead stub there. Also, I wanted to take that off because it's right here at the junction at the crotch. And Having something there blocks the flow. It doesn't let the eye go up the tree. So taking that off lets the eye go up the tree. And so I'm going to use a little cut paste to just put over that cut. It will help it heal faster and uh, callus faster and protect it. And it also just kind of disappears into the tree so that I'm not looking at a white spot. So cosmetically, it does something too. Again, I just want to take my time with it and not rush it. And that's important. The, the tree dictates the pace of things. You know, I, I have my ideas, but it's all based on what the tree can handle. This is a black pine, which the black pine is a mainstay of bonsai. The wires put on to hold the branches in place in terms of moving them to a new location and having them stay there. And once the tree has grown for enough time for the wood to hold that position, the wire will come off. And when I repot this tree, I want to change the front of the tree so that it's being viewed from this angle and not from this angle. So one of the reasons this makes a better front is the roots are wider 
here when viewed from this angle. And so the tree looks more substantial and more rooted and gripping the ground. That's an important aspect of bonsai. And we're often trying to make the tree appear aged. And that's another thing, those gnarled roots gripping the ground is a sign of an old tree. Um, Bonsai people venerate age. It's a little bit different from a Western philosophy, but I really like it. Trees that are wounded and old and still alive, that's, uh, you know, given a high regard. And repotting is necessary because the roots are growing and filling up all the, the soil space. Um, so we want to get some of the roots out. So there's a good relationship between the amount of roots and the amount of soil. Also to put fresh soil in that uh, has more nutrients for the tree. The tree's in a very confined space. It has a very limited amount of resources. So to repot, we fertilize, water regularly. Um, so I use a kind of a Sith-like blade to, to make sure it's loose around the sides. So finessing the tree out of the pot without one thing with these pines is we don't want to break the bark, damage the bark. So I'm going to grab under the branch is a good place to grab. So here's the pot. The first thing I would do is clean the pot, put in new screens. These screens are here to keep bugs out of the soil and to ensure there's good drainage. So I'd wash this all, put in new screens and put a layer of soil on the bottom. So this is the soil that I use. It's a mix of akadama, which is a clay that's been fired and put into granules. And the akadama, the clay, holds a lot of nutrients and water. And then it's got lava and pumice. The others provide good drainage. What I would do is, is take off probably at least a third of the bottom. And I often just use this saw and cut right through all those roots. Um, and then I have uh, dedicated tools that I only use for roots, um, so I don't mind them getting banged up a little. And then I would take a little off the sides so that there's fresh soil around the sides. And then this is a root hook, and I can just gently loosen this soil up so I can see some of the roots. And then I move down to a chopstick and just tease out some of these ends. And we want to preserve those fine roots as much as I can. So I'm cutting away some of the thicker roots. So we're left with fine roots. And fine roots produces fine growth on top. So I would put it back in, backfill with new soil, wiggle my chopstick in so that the soil will settle and then we'll water it thoroughly to let all the dust get washed through the, the pot. And the tree's good for another three years. So I wanted to talk about giving back a little bit. It's a philosophy that was instilled in me up at Merritt and particularly in the aesthetic pruning world. So I do a dropping time on the second Sundays here at the house. So come with your trees and everyone's welcome, all skill levels. <laughs>